In this video, I take the world's largest rubber band powered airplane up on a bunch of balloons to see how far it will fly, because we all know it's not getting up there on its own. Well, failure is always an option. There are no guarantees of success. A million things could go wrong, and this could be seven months of hard work down the drain in an instant. Where am I going with it? You're just gonna let it go. In a previous video, I spent seven months using trial and error to construct and eventually fly the world's largest rubber band powered airplane. The journey wasn't always smooth, but with some persistence, it achieved a 12 second flight under its own power. Just like the Wright brothers' first flight. If I wanted it to fly longer, however, the airplane was going to need a few major changes. That's the new assembly. This should be able to take as much power as the airplane needs without failing, unlike the last hook, which I'm pretty sure would have just snapped at some point. The rubber bands received lubrication for more power, and the fuselage was covered in film to reduce drag between the wings and over the frame. Also, I wanted to try out competition-grade rubber bands that are made for these sorts of airplanes. This thing's a beast. I now completely understand why they don't make them this big. <laughs> I figured if it was made for it, it must be better. <sighs> Three, two, one, let go. That's just no power. This new rubber is completely insufficient. It's almost as expensive as silver. I'd rather have silver. After that, it was back to the spear gun rubber. Just more of it than before, and more winding. Whew. Just nervous. Three, two, one, let go. All right, that's good. Hell yes! Absolutely. Eventually, with these changes, we managed a 21 second flight. Running beside it as it flew along was close to magic. But I wanted more. You see, there are these really high performance rubber band powered airplanes that can stay up for minutes without any additional lift after climbing many hundreds of feet in an instant. They are a marvel of both machinery and poetry. This is my friend Curtis, and he was like, why not use a bunch of balloons? So here we are. It was clear that the rubber band on my model wasn't going to get as nearly as high as I wanted to go. But if I used balloons to take the model high first, then when I released from altitude, I could fly as long as the high performance models. I would need to add some electronic devices to make this idea fly. There would be servos to release the airplane from the balloons, one to let the propeller start turning, and another on the rudder to make it go left or right. I would also need a GPS to let me know how high I was for releasing the airplane, making sure I did not cross the FAA limit of 400 feet. I originally intended to use one radio for the balloon and one for the airplane, but I ran into some pairing issues and needed another solution. Oh, 
So this is one radio, two receivers. Wow. Flaps one, flaps up, flaps one. To bring down the balloons that would take the airplane up, I needed to test some igniters that would pop the balloons remotely. Making sure the airplane release mechanism could carry the entire weight of the airplane was critical and needed to be tested. Wow. Wow. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. It works. So I can't decide whether I should add the elevator servo or not so I can control up and down as it comes off the balloon. It would be safer if we had it, but it's less like true to free flight if I don't. What do you think, Chris? Should I add it or not? I think you should add it. I think I'm gonna go for broke. Keep it pure free flight. So when I go to full throttle, it will release the propeller. Everything was working, but we still didn't have helium for the balloons. Hydrogen would have been better and cheaper, but it's prohibitively hard to get a hold of in California. That is where Chris from California Tool and Welding Supply comes into the picture. What do you need for control? Uh, I mean, for indoors is better for the wind, yeah, so I'm not worried about it getting away from us. What size yeah. balloon are you actually It's a five and a half foot balloon. Okay. You guys supplying welders or you do the welding? We supply. Oh, okay. And then that's one portion, and that's the hard bit set of the business. We're mostly the gas, spec gas, the purity, the final gases. I was looking at uh, getting hydrogen, but the gun, whatever. And so you have to like, you have to sell your soul to get those things. Hydrogen usability is used in uh, <laughs> from a, a balloon static, right? With hydrogen is in the brewery all over. Yeah. So, well, that's uh, what we were going for. Yeah. That's what you were <laughs> applying, then hydrogen would do it for you. I mean, it's easier. Yeah. <laughs> the only caveat is, I think the switch is in the right position, so when I connect the battery, it may just go off. Pounds, 13 ounces. Two pounds, 13 ounces. That's the lift you were looking for? Uh, it said 4.5 per balloon. Oh, so you're only looking at half the balloons that you're requiring then. Yeah, so Sunday is out. So this might be the accidental, I apologize. Three, two, one. Whoa! Oh, it's a juice. <laughs> half success, I guess. You know, BB gun as a backup. <laughs> we intended to pay for the helium, but Chris thought this was such a fun project he decided to donate the helium we needed. You rock. Because of all the changes to the airplane, we needed to check the center of gravity one last time. Turns out we needed the weight of a bigger camera on the tail to get everything to balance. With everything ready and no more excuses, it was go time. Yeah.
failure is always an option. Quitting YouTube. I'm not worthy of a channel. Up until this moment, I had been relying on the strength of the clear covering to keep the wing from twisting. As the plane dove and sped up, it was revealed at this higher speed that the covering alone was insufficient to keep the wings from twisting catastrophically. Perhaps, if I had followed Chris's intuition on adding an elevator servo, things would have turned out differently. I definitely felt that sequence of events in the pit of my stomach for a few hours afterwards. Failure lands pretty hard no matter how many times you go through it. But to my eye, the joy of success is greater, so let's fix it. <laughs>